Uh, Nigeria is uh, one of the African countries that must show leadership. For one, uh, we have the largest population, 167 million people. Uh, also endowed with little resources, though you compare our resources to the number of people, they're quite small, but if you put it together as an in, uh, independent state, uh, uh, we are blessed. And uh, if they are properly honest, could uh, really help not just Nigeria, but uh, Africa as a whole. The Nigerian economy should overtake the South African economy in the next few years in terms of GDP. What is this going to mean? One thing I, one thing I normally tell people is I'm not too interested in statistics. I want the growth to be translated into practical benefits to people. We have a high level of unemployment. The number of our young people are unemployed. So I don't want to celebrate percentage growth GDP. I want in Nigeria that people, when you wake up, you should not begin to think about what you will eat. You should not begin to think about the school your children should go. You should not begin to think about power. You should not begin to think about water. I'm more interested in those than uh, IMF will issue, World Bank will issue, uh, growth rates and so on. But how does this translate to comfort and the individual uh, well-being? Mr. President, the Nigerian economy grows presently at 7%. But it could easily reach double digit if enough power generation is delivered. We can get to double digit. Power is a limiting factor because the small and medium scale enterprises that really stimulate a robust economic growth in any nation, their turnover is quite low in Nigeria because of the cost of power. They have to generate their own power. And that's one of the reasons why power is the number one priority of the pre present administration. Even during my campaign, power is number one. And we are working very hard. And we believe that uh, I don't like to give time frames. But we believe we stabilize power and continue to uh, improve on it, especially now that we are going on with a complete deregulation. I believe it will improve significantly. And also the gas factor, the distribution of gas to companies that can generate their own power, that they will not use generators, but they use turbines. That's one of the reasons that we have a relationship. We have, uh, we have signed MOU with uh, Siemens to come into the country to manufacture small turbines maybe 5 megawatts, 10 megawatts, 50 megawatts, up to 25, this more, so that some enterprises that can afford it, they can install their own turbines, use the gas, generate their own power, and it will be cheaper than the, uh, the national uh, uh, power that uh, will generate centrally. But, uh, it will now reduce the use of generators. Of uh, course, generators are not too environmentally friendly because they use liquid hydrocarbon. But at least the turbines use the gas hydrocarbon, and combustion of gas is almost 100%. So the issue of pollution uh, is taken care of. We are still at around 5,000 megawatts in terms of power generation, and there has not been any increases in the past two years. How aggressive are you in making sure you deliver on your number one priority? We are working day and night. But I want to avoid targets. I'm mentioning figures. I don't want uh, people to take me to tax. Oh, you promised 5,000, promised 10,000 by this time. No, I really want to do that. But if you have listened to the Minister of Power that briefed uh, Nigerians on Wednesday, he, because he is the Minister of Power, he was closer to some targets. But I wouldn't want to. What, what I can promise is that. It is our number one priority, still our number one priority, to continue to be our number one priority until power stabilizes in the country. We have seen a lot of reforms within the economy, like the banking sector, the capital market, etc., etc. But there is still a lot of concerns around the oil and gas sector, as the PIB bill has not yet been voted in Parliament. Give us an update and a time frame regarding the PIB bill. The PIB were working very hard, and. Uh, uh, even with me, we have some members of our National Assembly. Uh, are, uh, both uh, those of us in the executive arm of government and our parliamentarians, and even the business uh, sector, especially those who are in the oil and gas industry, are quite passionate about the PIB. Unfortunately, the PIB uh, waited that 
the last parliament going to conclude it, but somehow there were a few areas they couldn't, and it was going towards the end. You no, know, towards the end, there are politicians, everybody struggling, campaigning for elections, so we were unable to pass the PIB bill. But this time around, I believe we'll, we've set up a committee to review it, because when it was in the parliament, because there were public hearings, so a number of issues came up, and we want to put everything together and make sure that all stakeholders come together so that by the time it gets to the parliament, we will not have this kind of unnecessary discordant tones that will create more confusion in parliament. I, I believe this time around, when they, they get it, under a reasonable time, they will pass the PIB bill because it's a key factor in terms of uh, investment in the oil industry. You have empowered a very dynamic economic team, probably the best the country never had. Reforms on tracks, but Niger needs jobs, and this is urgent. What I will uh, advise, my plea, my request, is that Nigeria is a country that the market is there. It's one of the countries that you can come and invest. Presently, we have certain gray areas that people are a bit apprehensive, the issue of security. But the people who are there are working. Yes, we have occasional challenges, but we are committed to, make, to bringing it down drastically. Uh, in fact, we are hoping to host the World Economic Forum uh, for Africa in, uh, in 2014. And uh, of course, the issue of uh, security, I said, look, I believe, I believe by next year, 2013, nobody will raise security uh, as an issue at all. Uh, I believe we are working very hard. I believe we'll get there. Everybody is keen in, I believe uh, I will get there. The other thing we've been working at is that if you look at the statistics in terms of the ease of doing business, the various parameters, our, our own uh, indicators are not too good which uh, the, uh, the Minister of Trade and Investment is even working with uh, the management of the World Economic uh, Forum and others. And uh, we are working very hard to bring it down. For example, there are certain things that we could do it very easily, like the visa policies and so on. Uh, and I already directed the Interior Ministry that for good business people, before this time, you, you, the no maximum number of years you can get a Nigerian visa is two years. And I said, uh, if if companies are operating in Nigeria, let us say, take the oil industry, for example, Shell, Algeb, these IOs, these big uh, companies, or maybe if you take out the communication, um, MTN and others, the chief executives of these companies will always come to Nigeria. These are credible, they are international figures. Why should they be going to the embassy every two years? So these are people that, as long as they are alive, you can give them visa. So we have changed that, we can give 10, even more for that, those categories of people. Then even for other smaller business people who just probably who just want to explore the country for the first time, we feel like, look, if you can get note verbal from your own foreign ministry, if you're from say, South Africa, if a South African ministry can give you a note verbal, that means that you're a credible person. You come to the airport, you should get a visa and enter Nigeria. If you just want to come for a short visit of less than one week, it is when you want to stay longer that you now need to get a very formal visa. So we are trying to change most of this. I'm just giving you that as an example. The issues of good governance, the issues of legal system and so on, the issues like uh, how to get land, how many days will it take you to register your business. We are working on all this. And I believe that uh, with the commitment we have and the economic team we have, and of course our economic team now, we incorporate the private sector and we meet regularly and the people are quite uh, happy to work with us. So we don't give them money. Of course, they are rich people anyway. People like Dangote, who is one of the top businessmen in Nigeria, Jimobi and so on. They are part of the uh, federal government economic team. So we blend the, uh, blend the private sector experience and uh, those of us in government to make sure that we come up with policies that will make our economy to grow. So we don't want to come up with a policy that you'll just ram on business people, either you take it or you leave it. No. Any government policy that will affect the economy must be a policy that will not frustrate business. And that's why we bring the private business people in, we bring the regulators in, and of course those of us in the executive arm of government who will implement. It's only the parliamentary and the judicial arm that we don't want to bother, since these are purely executive responsibility. But we have brought this tray. Those of us in the executive that will implement the policies, the regulators, 
that will regulate and of course the business people that these policies affect.